Hello, Time Lords and ladies, and welcome back to episode two of... Ooh, actually, wait, that could get confusing. Welcome to Let's Play Back to the Future, episode two, part three. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, anyway, uh, what was our objective? We were trying to get to the speakeasy so that we could find a way of somehow getting Biff arrested. Because, as it turns out, Biff not getting arrested is kind of a big deal. Ooh, hang on. Edna... Oh, whoa, whoa. This looks fancy. I need to know what this is. I suspect Emmett has had a hand in this. Huh, looks like Emmett's been busy. But, what? You're not gonna touch things? But you always touch things you have no idea how to control. Alright, fine, fine. Let's go talk to Edna, considering she's the most obvious person to talk to right now. Although, whether we want to Pardon talk me, to sir. her... From the way you're dressed and your general aura of seediness, I can infer only I beg one your pardon. thing. You're heading for Tannen's speakeasy, am I right? Seediness? Seediness? I am not seedy. Thank you very much. Let's go with no. I object to your statement. Uh, no? At least you possess enough shame to lie about it. If it helps, we're going to the speakeasy so that we can get you, Tannen arrested. I beg you to tarry here a few more seconds and listen to my song. Me, 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 me. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh no! No, don't sing, don't sing, don't sing, don't sing. You say you've lost your self-respect, but you should care. <laughs> what? In heaven's name! Oh sorry, <laughs> Miss Strickland. Just a little experimental prototype gone momentarily awry. Mr. Brown, why is there a dog in that vehicle? Why? Well, to advance the human condition, of course. Hello, Sonny. Sonny? Mr. Crockett, what are you doing in that getup? But that's not the name I chose. I, 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 what was the name I chose? Corleone. That was it. I chose Corleone, not, not Crockett. Jeez. Um, I'm going undercover. I'm going undercover. How exciting. You'll have to give me an exclusive sometime. Right now, I've got some souls to save. And you'll have to get an eyeful of my newest experiment. You're not angry about the rocket drill? Water over the bridge. I've moved on to bigger and better things. Come by the gazebo when you get a chance. I'll be setting up. You won't believe what Ainy and I have been up to. Famous last words. All right. Now, where's that speakeasy? Oh, that's right. I just realized we went back to the future without Einstein. We left him with other Doc Brown. How, how irresponsible are we? Oh, we were in far too much of a hurry to get back home, because... Okay, so we had the whole issue of us going back in time in order to save Marty. Sonny, you're just in time. And then, and then we dropped off, we dropped off, um, other... Wait, no, not other. It's, it's the only, um, Grandpappy McFly. We dropped him off, and then we went back to the future without Einstein. I feel so bad. I feel terrible. I would have ditched anybody if I could have brought Einstein, but I'm kind of a dog person. There we go, that one. So, uh, thanks for watching Einstein while I've been away. away. It's been a pleasure. He's proven to be a surprisingly willing test subject. It's almost as if he's been working with me for years. Huh. More like decades. About that. Well, not really decades, because it was Copernicus before it was Einstein, so it's just... Doc has this thing for really intelligent dogs of whatever breed that is, which I don't actually recognize. I like dogs, that doesn't mean I know anything about the breeds. Um, how have you been? What are you doing? How have you been? How have you been, Emmett? I know I haven't seen you in a couple of months. I'm great, and I owe it all to you! Really? Yes! That argument I had with my father during our jet drill experiment gave me the incentive to finally quit that dreary court job. I've committed myself full-time to a life of science! Uh, does, does that pay well? I'm assuming not, really. Although you've managed to get these materials all together, and I know some of these aren't actually that cheap. What's the story with the little car and all this equipment? Einstein and I are conducting a few experiments with this one-quarter scale model to work out a few hitches in my planned demonstration at the Hill Valley Expo in a couple of months. A radio-controlled car? No. Well, yes, but there'll be so much more than that. It will amaze the world. <gasps> Is this the prototype for your Got time it. machine? Not what? I'll show you. Ready to go, Einstein? But you need a flux capacitor in order to travel in time. 
watch this. When this baby hits 23 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious cow flop. Oh no way! Einstein, no, you're basically. Not to worry. I've got a fail-safe eject mechanism around here someplace. You're basically the Howard Stark of of this Nothing universe. To worry about. Nothing. Did did Einstein just fall out of the? Okay, he's fine. I'll go see Ooh. if I can find something to help or someone. Okay, I'm assuming we go visit old Doug Brown, but uh, I need to question your wisdom, Emmett. Emmett, you're a genius. You've invented a flying car decades, decades before it was e even possible. Why did you put the dog in it? Y you were testing a radio-controlled car. There was no need to put the dog in the car. That I'm guessing we're just kind of... The game developers decided to go for a... A reenactment of that opening scene from the first movie, as well as the opening scene from the game, I guess. Um, Flophouse sign. Majestic arms. Transients welcome. Well, they don't get more transient than me and Doc. I want to talk to. Okay. I suppose this is the best way to actually talk to Brown, Doc Brown, because I can't actually pan up to see his face. Yes, there we go. Hey, Doc. How's the room? It's a little cleaner than I would have imagined for a depression era flop house. How are your investigations going? Uh, not at all. We we do have an issue with your dog, though. And that is surprising, not on the list. Why didn't you tell me I'd run into your younger self tonight? Because I don't remember being out here tonight. Clearly, your interactions with my younger self two months ago have slightly altered my personal timeline. I never had the nerve to perform public experiments like he's doing. No matter... Those experiments will be forgotten once I've seen Frankenstein. Frankenstein? Yes. Right now, my younger self is fiddling around down there with rocket propulsion systems for his demonstration at the expo. The thing that'll kick off your scientific career. Exactly. Now, the rockets are a horrible idea, and I'll soon realize that they'll never work. But eventually, I'll wander into that movie theater and see Frankenstein and clear my mind. I've kept the ticket stub from that movie in my wallet ever since. See? Why? Because it's during this movie that I'll have the inspiration for my breakthrough at the expo. It doesn't have anything to do with reanimating the dead, does it? Not I the hope way you're not. Thinking, no. But during that famous scene when Colin and Clive turned the wheel that raised that shrouded figure into the tower and that bolt of lightning struck, well, let's just say more than one brain was reanimated that night. Oh no. Oh no, I, I'm really worried because the fact that he's kept that ticket in his wallet means something's going to change. He's going to pull out that ticket later on and then Frankenstein is going to completely disappear. Or it'll, like the ticket will disappear or it'll be a completely different movie and we'll have changed Doc Brown. No, actually, he could have changed for the better, but we don't want to change too much. I mean, we definitely don't want to change him enough that'll ruin his relationship with Clara and the kids, jeez. That's a terrifying thought. Save Einstein. Damn, it's not Save having much luck getting Einstein off the courthouse. I'm not surprised. Einstein's a smart dog, but heights give him the willies. What can we do? Hmm. I've got it. What? Just get my younger self distracted, and I'll handle the rest. Um, do you have any information about how to distract him? No. Okay. Uh, we might as well gather more information while we're here. Where'd you park the DeLorean? I hid it in a DeSoto lot. Nobody's buying cars these days, so it should be safe in there. Please, pl please don't say stuff like that. It, don't say it should be safe there. I want like a hundred percent guarantee it's going to be safe. And if it's in a, oh no, I'm worried about the car. It's going to get stolen, isn't it? Well, it's going to get air quotes bought and to us stolen. Uh, about the speakeasy arsonist. Hey, who did burn down Tannen's original speakeasy anyway? I still don't know. I'd really like to find out before we go home. I never did get a straight answer about why he came back to 1931 in the first place. It's, uh, personal. When this is over, I'll tell you all about it. Hang on. I'm gonna hold you to that, you know. That's interesting. I thought... I thought you came back specifically to find out the mystery of who burnt down the speakeasy. 
So there's more to it. The plot thickens. I'm really interested. You can't... No, you have to tell me now. Can you explain all this? I'm confused. It's very simple. In the original timeline, timeline A, the speakeasy arsonist was never caught, creating one of Hill Valley's enduring historical mysteries. Okay. When I traveled back to 1931, I created timeline B, in which I was misidentified as the arsonist and subsequently killed by Kid Tannen's goons. Einstein came with me, and somehow he ended up in the DeLorean when its failsafe mechanism triggered, sending it back to 1986. Which is where I came in. Precisely. You traveled back to June 14, 1931, creating Timeline C, a world in which Carl Sagan wasn't rubbed out by Kid Tannen. But Arthur McFly was served for the subpoena. And shot by Kid Tannen's goons. Yes. So you jumped back in time six hours, creating Timeline D, <laughs> saving your grandfather's life, but somehow preventing Kid Tannen from meeting his date with justice. Which is why the Tannens were so powerful when we jumped back to 86. Uh-huh. So now we've returned to August of 1931, creating Timeline E, in which, fingers crossed, we'll send Tannen to prison where he belongs. Got it? Sure. Good. One question. What? Can you explain all this? I'm confused. Did you just really, really? <laughs> I mean, it's fairly straightforward, especially the way he explained it. I think, I think Doc Brown did a fantastic um, kind of monologue there. Or Monologue, is that the right word? I'm thinking of a different word, and I'm pretty sure it starts with E. The word will come to me later, and I'll probably use it in a different context, which is totally incorrect. So we'll see about that, about Trixie. I haven't really made any progress with Trixie yet. Well, get out there and make some. If she doesn't blow the whistle on Kid tonight, he may never be brought to justice. Oh, I think I... Hold on. Hold on. I think I've had a bit of a brainwave. <sighs> okay, if Trixie is who I think she is, and I think that Trixie is uh, Marty's grandmother, she falls in love with... What's his face? His name again? Grandpappy McFly. Arthur. Arthur McFly. That was it. Oh, I keep forgetting his name for no apparent reason. I should remember Artie uh, because of Warehouse 13. Artie's such a great name. And because I named my Mass Effect Shepard, Artie Shepard. How do I keep forgetting that name? Um, maybe she rats on Kid Tannen so that they can be together happily ever after. Although they still manage to end up together. This is curious. This is curious. I, I can't wait to see how all of this unfolds. Why are Tannins always such jerks, anyway? Uh, it's hard to say. Rogue, Neanderthal genes in their DNA, perhaps. I would definitely say it's genetic. Okay, um, we need to go Just downstairs. Keep your head low, Doc. I'll be back soon. I'll keep an eye out for your grandfather. Well, what we're gonna do is actually- Oh, hold on. Hold on, I don't like the look of this. I don't like the look of this at all. Is this a movie- movie advert? No. No. Okay, I really don't want to be right, but I feel like the Frankenstein ticket is going to change into shark. Is that shark? Yes, just shark, which I'm assuming is this universe's jaws. All right, we need to distract. Whoa. Hi there. This way. This way, good sir. Hello. Um, Don't worry, Emmett. I'm sure you'll get it right someday. Oh, I'm not worried about that. Right now, I'm more concerned with Einstein. <laughs> Look in the background. Did you guys see in the background? Oh, that was, that was a spinning image of Voyage de la Lune. Oh, it, 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 was, it was the flying car crashed into the poster. Okay, we need to find... We need to find something... That can distract him. I don't know what. I mean, besides... Okay, that could possibly distract him, but we want to go through all of this information first. Have you seen that Frankenstein movie yet? I hear it's pretty inspirational. Not yet. I've been so busy with my rocket there car is, that in I the haven't found time. But I'm planning on going tonight. At least I will once I get Einstein down. Ooh, that's awesome. Uh, tell me about Trixie? You know anything about Trixie Trotter? The songbird of the Sierras? The nightingale of the north? The floozy of the foothills? Uh... Never heard of her. Man, I've definitely never snuck into Tannen's speakeasy <laughs> to listen to her. Of course not. Wait, which speakeasy? The new speakeasy or the old speakeasy? The one that got burnt down? What went wrong with your rocket car? I'm not entirely sure. As soon as we get Einstein down, I'm gonna go look for it. Um... I know exactly where it is. It's right behind you, good sir. Um, 
What's up with you and Edna? What's up with you and Edna? A couple months ago, I could swear she was making goo goo eyes at you. That was before my father had her stay sober society meeting thrown out of our house. Now she takes every opportunity she can get to snipe at me and my work. It's very distracting. Do you know anything about Officer Danny Parker? My pop says he's a good cop when he's not drinking. Good. Of course, now I hear he drinks all the time. Not good. That's definitely not good. Although, it means he's probably in the speakeasy, so that's how he's probably gonna bust Kid Ten. And awesome, that's perfect. Um, is that everything? That is everything. Find your rocket car. Why don't you go look for your car now? And leave Einie stuck on a ledge? <laughs> Never. Dogs are much more important than any silly rocket car. Especially one that doesn't work at all. I'm glad you've got your priorities straight. I agree. Um, rocket cars definitely take a lower priority than dogs. Why don't you take a break from Einstein Patrol for a minute? Maybe go see a movie or something. Thanks for the offer, Sonny. When one Emmett Lathrop Brown sets his mind on a task, nothing can distract him from his purpose. And right now, that purpose is rescuing your dog. Technically, it's your dog. Okay, we're going to exit this conversation well, and... I'll go off and see if I can get some help. You do that. I'll stay here and see if I can think of a way to get Einie off that ledge. I have a bad idea. And it involves Edna. I feel like every bad idea involves Edna, really. Let's see if we can um, mess with this a little bit. Don't touch those! They're very sensitive! Sorry. Why don't we touch them? Then he has to come over and fix them. Don't touch those! No. They're very <laughs> sensitive! Sorry. Why don't you come over here and make me not touch them, huh? Away from looking at the, the, the dog. Hey, Edna. Mr. Crockett, what can I do for you? My name is Corleone. I chose the name. Please get it right. Um... Don't... No, don't encourage their relationship. Emmett has a flourishing relationship with Clara, and we're gonna keep it that way, okay? Whoa! That is a long list. Okay, we know what she's doing. Got a story. Nice song. I don't want to encourage your speak or your singing, to be honest. What have you got against dogs anyway? They're smelly, rude, completely unable to take care of themselves, and frankly, they're not very bright. If I had my druthers, dogs would be banned from public places. Harsh. It's a harsh world, Mr. Crockett. I hope you never get your way. Mm, right. Whatever happened with that speakeasy arsonist? I was about to ask you the same question. Me? Don't play coy with me. I may not have any journalistically acceptable proof, but I know you had a hand in Carl Sagan's daring escape from the authorities. What? How could you possibly even know that? You've been talking to Tannen. I know you have. Alright, um, Trixie. You wouldn't happen to know anything Ooh, about no, 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 Trixie I just saw Trotter, the thing that was you? right below it. Kid Tannen's latest conquest? Well, she claims to be a lounge singer from Seattle, but my sources in Washington have never heard of her. I mean, honestly, Trixie Trotter, what kind of name is that? A, a, a stage name. Her her real name is... What was it? What was, what was Marty's grandmother's name? Sylvia, I think? And Sagan's innocent. Didn't you think that Sagan was innocent? I used to, but after he escaped, two more speakeasies were torched in Colfax and Georgetown. That's just a coincidence. Coincidence? Or is our friend Carl a serial arsonist? I don't like you anymore. See, I, I had a little bit of respect for you when you thought when you thought Carl Sagan was innocent. But now I don't like you. Mostly because you don't like dogs. That's enough for me to not like anybody, really. Alright, um, let's try this. I got a hot lead for you. Oh, what is it? Kid Tannen arrested. Oh, glorious day! When did it happen? Well, it hasn't happened yet, but it's gonna. Keep me posted. What? Come on, you should be helping me with this. I feel like I should somehow recruit you. Alright, I okay, I don't really feel like I'd want to talk about anything. Ooh! Actually, these two I do want to know about. Do you know anything about Officer Danny Parker? Parker? Just another soul lost to the twin vices of booze and despair. I've asked him to tell me his story for my column. Sort of a cautionary tale, but he's never in the mood to talk to me. Also because drinking is illegal due to the prohibition. 
Why would he want to rat himself out? He's a cop after all. Jeez. What's wrong with you?